Alright, hello everyone. My name is Timo Poyervi, and I'm one of the proud founders of Hitlandis.com and Cognitive Maps, which is the name of the company. And thank you all for waiting for me. I've had such a great warm-ups. Excellent. Um, I'm going to tell you about the visual discovery revolution we're working with and to share you with some pieces of data visualization. I'm going to show you what we've done within that area and then we'll have a look at some nice visualization cases. The thing is that today, in our modern society, we're all suffering from information overload. We do. Horrible. Information glut, really. In this digital society of ours, we actually have lots of information problems needing to be solved. And one of the best ways to do that is by using good design of visualizing information. Visualizing. And why is this so good? Because fundamentally our internal visual system up here is extremely well built to analyze, well, visual things, for visual analysis, if, we, if you like. <laughs> By nature, that is. By nature, we're not that good in reading hundreds of lines of numbers like the ones dropping down here, even though looking very good, cool, but it's difficult to read. But to see it all visually with patterns and connections that matter, it all starts making sense. Data begins to tell us a story. Instead of a long list of numbers, you can focus on the piece of information that really matters to you. Let's begin with a video from BBC in the UK. This is our national telephone network as it comes to life on an average working day. The activity of every exchange in the country is being tracked second by second. By two o'clock, we're making almost a million calls a minute. Every city is aflame with chatter. Belfast. Glasgow. Bristol. And that's just calls made on landlines because we are in the middle of our mobile revolution, sending 300,000 texts a minute. And even these aren't the true foundations of our new information economy. Most critical is data, pure information, carried over the internet. Our major cities are now connected by fibre optic backbones that carry email and web pages, YouTube videos, a great river of digital ones and zeros. By mid-afternoon, British Telecom is carrying 223 million megabytes of data an hour. That's half a million web pages every second. And of course, this isn't restricted to the UK. Here's an image of how the major data pipelines in Britain interconnect with the rest of the world, firing data to every corner of the globe and gathering it back again. This, we're told, is the foundation of our new economy. Yes, good stuff. Imagine all that data you just saw, phone calls, emails, millions of them, like this. Would it be cool? No. Quite horrible. Uh, so why is this data visualization so important then? Think about the oldest data visualization tool there is. Oldest one. The map. This is Manhattan. Now imagine a pure text file being given to you for your first visit to New York City. First visit. This could be the text file. Now try to cross for lunch. Could be done but not, not so easy. I rest my case. Uh, okay, we should only make digital uh, things better. Better than ever. We should only make our lives better. Especially while it works within content discovery. You know, how we find things within internet. So let me show you how we, in our company, Cognitive Maps, we are going to change the content discovery of digital services with our own visual discovery platform. 
data visualization is going to change how we all discover content out there. And this is the revolution. But to visualize the problem, I want you all to think about a normal record store out there on High Street with CDs and stuff, you know, they still exist. How long, I don't know, but still. Or public library, lots of books, lots of stuff, lots of data. Question is, what if? What if your access to all that enormous amount of data would be having to peek through their keyhole or a letterbox from the front door and shouting some words like, bring me the latest this and this, please? Wishing that somebody brings you a pile of search results out of which the three first ones are sponsored. Would you like that? I don't think so. You want to step inside the library or record store, locate your area of interest, your shelf, your genre, your tomatoes, and step next to them and start browsing content visually with your hands and eyes. Because that's what people do. We humans, we do that in real life. So why with internet content services? It's always the letterbox-like thing. You're supposed to type something in order to find something, and all you get is a mile-long list of millions of pretty unusable text-based pages of links. Horrible. I mean, especially that from the content owner's point of view. If I'm a medium-sized game producer uh, with very limited budget, like they usually do, except Rovio, uh, and my product happens to be number 6,000 out of those 2 million. If I'm number 1,000 out of those 2 million, nobody will find me. Absolutely. They won't find, they're not going to find me because they're not going to be further than two pages of those search results. How we use Google? Does anyone go further than two pages? Honestly, hands up if they do. Bah! Give me a break. Honestly, you don't. Okay, there's some exception, of course. But basically, it's a horrible, horrible content discovery problem out there. And uh, one of the biggest reasons why they're not going to find me, even if I'm 1,000 or something over there, is that I can't afford to be featured on those front pages out there, and on the other services. And this is what we're talking about. They say long tail doesn't exist. Well, it certainly does exist, it is there. But it can't be found with any of the current services and tools out there. Any one of them. All major content services operate around a very limited front page offering. Top 40, whatever, featured, this and this and this. Most of the online business takes place around those products being featured on the front page. Very limited, very limited. User experience is ex extremely biased and misguided. Users don't have a clue about the quantity nor quality behind the front page. What is there? I've been given something there, but I, I'm supposed to be happy with it. Really bad. And it's a situation with every single service out there. Every one of them. From Google to whatever. Here's an example. Quite well-known video service. They've got a lot of content. 48 hours being uploaded every minute. Gazillion of videos, horrible amount of data. How about their front page? They do have one, youtube.com. 34. In my screen, it's 15, and then I scroll down, it's 34. Gazillion versus 34. How misguided is that? I think that's horrible. I'm supposed to be happy with that. Then I type something in the search box and blah, 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 blah. Horrible. And business wise, if they can't find me, how, how on earth could anyone do anything about me, let alone buy my product? I have no business. Bad. And this is what me and my friends, we wanted to change. This horrible content discovery problem. We wanted to change that. We wanted to create the best content discovery on the planet. Nothing less. And we came up with one. We came up with 100% unique, completely different kind of content platform with visual browsing, ta-da, visuality. Making it the best content discovery current internet offers, I guarantee it is. The real beauty of the platform is that it works perfectly with any kinds of content items. It doesn't have to be music, like Hitlanis. It could be anything. We're talking about social objects. This is important. We are visualizing social interactive objects, objects that can, they can be anything from music to movies to, to conversations to 
likes even, or documents, or Twitter hashtags, anything. It's data. We can use that. Because the interaction there is data that matters. Important data. Okay, the first client on the platform is an award-winning music service called hitlines.com. Fully zoomable, map-like visual user interface, where every bubble you see is a vanishless artist. They call it sea of bubbles sometimes. Uh, the colors are musical genres, like red is rock and light blue is pop, etc., etc. So it's very easy to understand with one glimpse what's going on. It's a dynamic game board. The closer to the center you're located, the more popular you are. And that popularity comes from the activities of users and the bands. Whatever they do, they collect hotness points and the bands move towards the center. When they join the service, they always land on the outskirts and they start moving towards the center. Where they can actually win cool things from our partner. And let's have a look at it, how it works in action. Here it is, beautiful. It lands.com. Go and check it out. Fully zoomable, like I told you. I can drag it, fully draggable. I happen to like this. Well, I like so many genres, but now I've chosen this. Let's check Viola. Great band. Who are they? Okay, information. Who's this band? What's this? Monophobic? What I'm here doing is I'm browsing quite fast actually compared to Google Music Search type of thing, MySpace or whatever. It's just the visual browsing, it works so well. And we have Center Plaza, which is kind of a TV, so different channels for videos, songs of the week, anything we like basically. You can put there competitions I mentioned, they're quite good ones. You play the more details. And this is a good uh, visuality of, of this particular competition. These bands have entered this competition today. The more hotness they get, the more people help them in the competition, they move towards the center and actually may win, win a gig on that competition. So, Hitland is, is fully live, live, vivid community. At the moment, approximately 6,000 bands, uh, 50,000 registered fans, monthly users around 200,000. It's a nice little beast. Quite different from the traditional letterbox like service you're supposed to, with, with limited font page of 50 or 30 products. Here you see almost 6,000. You actually see, in the first glance, you see uh, 4,000 now. But then you just pick your genre, zoom in, you see more, you start seeing more. The logic here is basically exactly the same when you're using Google Maps. You open up Google Maps, you first you see bigger cities, then you start zooming in, you start seeing smaller ones. Logic is perfect, exactly the same. Meaning, this is unlimited how many objects we can put on the map. Am I happy or what? It's so cool. All right, moving on. Yeah, the Hitlands would have lots of music details there, but let's not dwell there because the thing is that we really want to visualize other things than not just music. We are moving forward with our platform. I've been so happy about it. We are super proud to be able to present our first corporate version of the platform. It's not that sexy, but it's actually very, very interesting to see. Hankegalleria.fi. Tekes, Technology and Innovation Fund in Finland, a governmental body. They just licensed our platform to visualize their organizations and projects, their funding. Hmm, nice. Because previously, if you go to tekes.fi and you want to find an organization linked to some project they're funding, It'll, it'll take week, one week for you to find the information. Here it is, everything is in, in one beautiful place, categorized per, per, you know, per category. Per. And it's so much easier. Remember? With lots of nice little details like this, interactive. Well, 
interconnectivity thing really, where you see this one organization is linked with these projects. Imagine that could be an actor and those are his movies he's acting in, or this could be a bass player and they are the bands he's playing in. I mean, this is endless, really nice. Just another example how to utilize our beautiful, beautiful platform. So, why visual browsing? Well, I've told you, because that's what people do in real life. And now I want you to look at these examples of everyday browsing experience. We all do this daily when do, we're shopping around. Nice selections of content, divided promptly by different categories, by either size, color, taste, brand, fashion, whatever, etc., etc. We don't shout for tomatoes from the door. We step next to the tomatoes and start browsing for details. That's what I keep saying. You don't shout for them. You go next to them and start browsing for details. That's the real-life browsing experience. Compared to this pretty unusable user experience found in everywhere in the digital world, I say visuality beats traditional text-based 6 nil. There's no question about it. But why is that? Again, why is that? Because that's what we do in real life. Remember that. I keep saying it. But also, the advantages are so, so clear. They are real clear. For example, our visual discovery platform generates deeper and wider content consumption. You know, people consume more when they see more. When they see their shelf of likes, they go there and dwell. Which should be a great thing for services. And it's only natural when you compare what's, what's there. I mean, come on. 15 versus 6,000. 15, 6,000. <laughs> I just zoom next to my pile of tomatoes and start browsing for details without any further page loads. How cool is that? Oh, yeah. yeah. And where to use our platform? Well, we've identified quite many areas. At the moment, we are concentrating in these, from basic content services where we visualize the content and its popularity, to innovation management where the, where the object of the map can be new ideas of people so they can share them and see how, they, how people like them. Or to project portfolio management where the projects are visualized on the map for better understanding really. Uh, not to mention trend mapping, which is a very interesting area because we could suck information like Twitter feeds and you know, generate heat maps of trending things. How cool is that? So basically, anyone with lots of important data would benefit miles from using our, our platform and generate more engaging service for their users. And I, yeah, of course, we're on, on most of the platforms. I was supposed to show you the iPad app here. You couldn't get it on the screen, but basically, Hitland is can be found for an App Store and Android. And here it goes, fully zoomable. The multi-touching is this is like orgastic feeling. It's so easy and good. It just works. Oh my god. It's so good. So basically the same things. You just click the ball, start playing it, find more information, more songs, share the songs to the internet. You can't see a thing I know, but who cares? Download it yourselves. It's available App Store and Android. Okay. You shut up then. Now, that's of our visual platform. And now I want to share you with some really cool stuff around there, from visualization things. The first one is generally about good data visualization. They say knowledge is power, but how do we make knowledge powerful? Especially when that knowledge comes in the form of data. Lots of data. How do we find the meaning? Tell the story. Share the story. Infographics. Where data meets design. What makes good data visualization? Take a few seconds to count the sevens in this number set. How many were there? Not sure? Now try. A simple color change makes comprehension almost instant. Color is one of several pre-attentive attributes, like size, orientation, flicker, 
Visual clues that the human brain processes within 250 milliseconds. Now imagine that we're not looking for specific numbers, but patterns. We can use color to show correlation, size to show quantity, or orientation to show trends. And not just data. The power of design can be used to better communicate all sorts of information. Processes. Hierarchy. Anatomy. Chronology. Better communication through innovation. Because your message is only as good as your ability to share it. as only as good as your ability, ability to share it. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. This is a nice video from Helsinki Public Trust. Suddenly, every summer in media, 
those blue ones, killer wasps. Horrible. Oh. So. Oh yeah. So this is how our fears look like over time in media. I think this is a beautiful example of data visualization using the landscape timeline, making it much more understandable, so much more understandable than just rows of numbers, like they've been collected, of course. Okay, moving on. They have this great project in Copenhagen of Denmark. It's called uh, Copenhagen Wheel. Welcome to the Copenhagen Wheel. The wheel that turns your ordinary bike into a smart electric hybrid. But the Copenhagen Wheel is more than a new type of electric bicycle. It's also a smart sensing device that provides real-time feedback about the environmental conditions in your city. Here's how it works. As you cycle, sensors inside the wheel analyze the levels of carbon monoxide, NOx, and noise in your surroundings. Also collecting information on ambient temperature, relative humidity, and road conditions. Through your phone, or on the web, you can monitor the quality of air you're breathing while cycling, or how well you're performing physically. That's not all. You can keep this data for your personal use, or share it with friends, gaining access to a larger pool of information. You can also make a bigger contribution through your data commute, and share your data anonymously with the city. When many cyclists donate the information their wheel is collecting, your city gains access to a new set of fine-grained environmental information. Through this, your city can cross-analyze different types of environmental data on a scale that has never been achieved before, build a more detailed understanding of the impact of transportation on a city's infrastructure, or study dynamic phenomena like urban heat islands. Ultimately, this type of crowdsourcing can influence how your city allocates its resources, how it responds to environmental conditions in real time, or how it structures and implements environmental and transportation policies. So turn on your life and turn on the city, the Copenhagen wheel. Yeah, nice one. The speaker could have spoken slightly clearer, of course. Yeah, but you got the point. Collecting information and visualizing it. Very nice. Very nice. Now, most of you might remember this quite popular video from video game called Tetris. Who remembers that? Oh yeah, of course. It's a legend. Here, again, our dear friend David McCandless turned it to <laughs> great infographics about US debt and call it Tetris. Summing up, 
Data visualization is a very important science, it is indeed, but also extremely useful for all of us in our everyday life. Like I've, I think I've shown you that. It actually makes things easier to understand, simple. As the data begins to tell us stories, at least I feel that way. And it is no-brainer to, to, you know, to understand that visuality beasts, the text-based, 6 mil, like I said. Internet began with the text-based things 16 years ago. It's time for a change. Visuality takes over. Simple. So, from our point of view, me standing here, this picture tells it all. Traditional versus visual. Traditional front page versus Hitlander's visual world. <laughs> Hitlander's user experience really is going... It's like going inside the record store, like I told you. It's not that you have to settle with some kind of stupid poster or some static stuff. It, it's, yeah, visuality makes things easier. You start browsing things visually, like we do in the real life. Okay, this is the last one today and I'm stopping here and I hope you enjoyed my piece of visual information. Thank you.